The BMW 1 Series was first introduced way back in 2004. That first generation car was essentially launched to offer a new entry model to the BMW family as the 3 Series sedan was slowly transforming into a more luxurious and larger offering at a higher price point. The first Gen 1 Series was quite the instant hit, catching on as a popular buy in Europe and subsequently in the US. In 2011, we first got to see this car, the second generation, which was then launched worldwide in 2012. And it is this car that we will be getting when BMW brings in the 1 Series to India later this summer. Now it is an ample looking hatch indeed and in fact I think the design team was specifically going for something that looks well a little bit aggressive, a little bit in your face as far as the design goes and so you've got this face up front which has an incongruously large kidney shaped grille and of course the massive headlights. All of that in keeping with what you're seeing across the BMW family right now, especially in the SUV space, you know, the X3, the new updated X1, they all have this sort of face up front and in fact, this is part of the same family as the X1, the 1 series and uh, same sort of look therefore is not surprising. I'm not sure everyone will like that because, uh, well, it is a little bit uh, disproportionate almost up front, but for those who do like it, it definitely delivers with quite a punch. Now this particular car is uh, kitted out with the urban trim and uh, there's different sort of trim lines you can get. We're still not clear what will come to India and so I don't want to speculate too much on that but what you do get is a front grille that's finished off in white. There's a little bit of a lip here in the spoiler in the same color and the uh, rear view mirrors are also white. And so overall you can do a little bit more with this. Remember that with cars like the Fabia at one end and the Mini at the other end, there's lots that goes on now in terms of individualization. You might have people who might even want a white roof. All of that is now possible. Again, not sure what will come to India because the car will be assembled at the plant in Chennai. And so the options get a little bit limited by doing that. Now, as you come around to the back, that's where you start to see hints of the uh, previous generation one series, for those of you who are familiar with it. Because, uh, well, from a distance, it looks kind of uh, exactly like that car, though this does have bigger tail lights. Again, that has to complement the face up front, right? So the thing about the car though is that whether it's the boot or whether it's the overall cabin, when you look at the car, it implies space. It is a pretty spacious car. It does have decent uh, cargo room and uh, it's good that the design implies that, especially in a market like ours. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Because at the luxury end of the market, even as premium hatchbacks start to slowly gain acceptance in India, the buyer would still want it all. Equipment-wise, the car is typical BMW territory with the same kind of gadgets, features and layout as the X1. Of course, the indication we have is that in India, BMW may not offer the urban line and may offer a luxury line like that in the 3 Series along with a sport line. Though I wouldn't mind being surprised by the urban line, frankly. At the back, when compared to the B-Class, things do get pretty tight because, uh, let's not forget, the B-Class is a bigger car. But that's not the reason for the comparison. Most buyers are, uh, well, going to still consider the option of sitting at the back, aren't they? Push this seat all the way to the back and you can see there's really nothing here in terms of legroom. This one's all the way in the front. So, uh, a compromise of sorts could still work. It doesn't leave you with too much room. But if you are one of those who's going to have a driver driving and just you at the back, well then you can push this seat in the front and then you're all right. But uh, otherwise, it could get just a little bit cramped back here. There are rear AC vents though. So um, overall, the back angle and the seat's all right, but uh, the sense of space, not so great. Now, cabin space-wise, the 1 Series sits somewhere in between the Mercedes-Benz A and B class hatches. And I wonder if that is the kind of positioning BMW will also adopt for it but I do get the sense that it will be positioned closer to the B than the A. All right, all that out of the way, let's drive the car now. Of course, this is going to be a pricey car, right? It's a BMW, and so it's not gonna be a cheap little hatchback, that's for sure. And so uh, there are certain expectations that you'll have. Luxury on the one hand is perhaps one of the highest expectations in our market, but uh, for me, it's all about performance. And I'll tell you what, baby, this car is one of the most fun little cars to drive. 
it's just so direct. It's just so much fun. It's very sporty. It's uh, where perhaps it redeems itself. Everything else that you might think of as a flaw in terms of its size, its comfort levels, its uh, segment to begin with, all of that gets made up in plenty because it just drives like an absolute dream. It is a driver's car. I don't think I've had this much fun in quite some time. And uh, yeah, nice twisty little roads. This is the car to have. Now the other thing is that uh, in typical BMW style, what we can perhaps expect is that the car will be launched in automatic only. I hope, I hope, I hope that there is a bit of a change of heart there and we get this six speed manual because I can tell you what, I've had so much fun with it today. It's uh, almost a pity to waste this car on only an automatic option. So, uh, well, not too much hope on that front, but uh, if it happens, I shall be celebrating. The 1 Series also has optional variable sport steering, which allows for tighter handling and sharper turns with lesser driver input, and also offers four-wheel drive and an active M suspension as options. But I don't expect all these options to be available in India, though the variable sport steering may be standard on the top end. The 118D is the car I had with me, and that is the variant I expect to definitely show up in India too. I did have my doubts initially on BMW offering a petrol variant at all for starters, though it does now seem that there will be not just one, but two options on both diesel and petrol. So there may be lots of variants then to choose from, though all this may not happen from word go and some variants could be introduced subsequent to the initial launch. The 118D in itself has specs that read handsomely, right? The 2-litre motor is one we know well, and it's not just the 143 bhp that impressed me, it's the massive 320 Nm of torque that blew me away. Of course, the 6-speed manual transmission, as I said, looks unlikely for India, so we will get the 8-speed Steptronic, just like in the X1. So now we come to the all-important question of price. Remember how BMW started the year by repositioning the X1? as a more luxurious and upmarket offering and took its entry pricing higher to above 28 lakh rupees. That leaves room in the lower 20s for the 1 series variants to fit in. I do not expect a very stripped down base version and so expect pricing to concentrate around 22 to 24 lakh rupees. Let's not forget that the Mini Countryman also starts here now and BMW would like to keep some differentiation between the two brands, especially since the Mini Cooper hatches are still pricey, fully built imports. So do you like the 1 Series? Would you like to see it priced aggressively for India? Well, share your thoughts with us on facebook.com slash cnbshow or tweet us at Sit Patankar.